Hello everyone and welcome to the Smallest Mars Mission in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. During a recent Twitch livestream I got into my head, partly thanks to suggestion from Pekka, that we should see how small we can make a Mars mission with one Kerbal uh, if we put them in the command chair. So the Kerbal that we have here, uh, Dafsky, is in a command chair on this mission and we are launching the entire Mars landing mission on a New Glenn rocket. We did expand the first stage there, uh, so that that we did. Uh, so we're getting uh, about 45, we were expecting about 45 tons to low Earth orbit here, is the entire mission. And of course, we still need all the supplies, even though the Kerbal is in the command chair, we need the supplies, we need all the fuel for landing and return and everything. And of course, you can see a fairly substantial heat shield there for the aero capture at Mars. This is the transfer burn to Mars, 4,500 meters per second, so more than average, uh, way more than average. We were just relying on a MechJeb plot here, and actually quite a long trip. Uh, but that was fine because we'd have to kill time anyway. Uh, really, we couldn't have Dafsky sitting on the surface for too long uh, because of the way the mission is configured. So, uh, we do have a separate nuclear stage here, so that was the... New Glenn second stage just now with the two BE-3Us, but now we have a single nuclear engine and a hydrogen tank, of course. And this nuclear engine is based on the NASA NTP architecture, so it's not a Timberwind or Pebble Bed or anything like that. It's just your normal one that they had in that plan, and fairly low thrust for that. But we weren't controlling from the right location here, that's why it was uh, sort of weirdly oriented, but it's about a 110 kilonewton thrust engine. Uh, so, after we got out of the atmosphere, uh, the thing is, we accidentally dipped into the atmosphere, you might have noticed during part of that burn, and so after we got out of the atmosphere, I made sure to replot the initial plot because it had reset, and we also needed to make sure we were controlling from the upper command chair, because otherwise it naturally controls from Dafsky's eye point, which is horizontal, not, not in the direction of motion, so. Yeah, it's complicated, and we'll have to do that multiple times. Dasky's right there, and I have her leave her seat, and we actually had a mass simulator for the Kerbal, because of course it's a command chair, um, the Kerbal has their own mass, and we had to put a little tank there in order to simulate that mass, and also put an explorer probe right there in order to provide ourselves with MechJeb. Now we just got rid of that explorer probe, so we no longer have MechJeb, because that doesn't come automatically with the Kerbal. Unfortunately, the Kerbal is not a mech Jeb, the Kerbal is a Jeb, if you will. Uh, anyway, so I have Dafsky get rid of both the Explorer core and the simulator tank to simulate the Kerbal mass in the seat, and then get her back in the seat. Uh, it was a minor miracle that she didn't, like, explode when clipping some part or something like that, because she's surrounded by all sorts of stuff. But anyway, it worked out. Dafsky with a uh, great uh, purple plume on her head <laughs> to match the plume of the nuclear engine, I suppose. Uh, so, purple here, there. And here we are, after doing the mid-course adjustment, approaching Mars. Now, during the mid-course adjustment, you may have noticed that the liquid oxygen was fine. You can turn back and take a look. Uh, we hadn't had any boil-off through the entire first half of the journey. But here, when we entered Mars SOI, the liquid oxygen, which is part of the ascent stage, was practically all gone. And so... That wasn't right. <laughs> Something went wrong with boil-off. I've talked about inconsistent boil-off before, but this was pretty severe. In fact, we're getting further away from the sun on the second part of our uh, journey to Mars, so the boil-off should be less, not suddenly humongous. So, anyway, we'll fix that by reloading the save, and I'll just manually put the liquid oxygen in. Uh, so I'm taking a look at supplies, and we were just doing an aero capture test here since I, I wanted to get an idea of what kind of altitude we needed for the periapsis. This would have us crashing into the ground, but I had quick saved when we entered the Mars SOI anyway. And having loaded the quick save, I went into the persistent file, put back our liquid oxygen. And uh, so that is a minor cheat, but it was cheating on me with the boil off thing, uh, suddenly making it all disappear, even though it was uh, fine at the mid course adjustment. Now on this whole pagoda that we are capturing around Mars, the top bit is the return vehicle. The empty command chair is for the return, so that won't be landed on the surface. We're trying to capture into orbit first. At the very bottom, right attached to the heat shield, is actually the tank with the food, water, and oxygen for the journey to Mars and for the lingering 
around Mars before we land. And so that's a lot of uh, food, water, and oxygen that, that we will dump prior to landing. And here we are, we have captured uh, successfully with a 42 kilometer periapsis for reference. That was the periapsis we had. And then uh, we raised the periapsis a little bit to 60 something and then did a second pass to get into a lower orbit so that the ascent stage, which is the toroidal tank there, uh, would have an easier time getting back to the return vessel. The return vessel has the food, water, and oxygen for the journey home about 210 days, actually 218 I think. And that's attached, that tank is attached directly to the top heat shield right under the top command chair. And then underneath that tank are four tanks attached directly to engines. That's the return stage for the return to Earth. So that is the whole arrangement. Now every time we turn back to it, it eliminates all the food, water, and oxygen from the ascent stage. And we keep having to replenish it. The ascent stage food, water, and oxygen is for the rendezvous time and also the time we spend on Mars. But we were only carrying about two weeks worth because we don't want to land with too much stuff on Mars, right? So that's why we can't stay on Mars for a very long period of time. And most of the food, water, and oxygen is so that we can linger in orbit. And here we are plotting our journey back, but uh, Transfer Window Planner seems to think we need like 3,400 meters per second, but the return stage only has about 2,500. So that was not making me happy. And we have to get back within the time frame that we have food, water, and oxygen in that return stage. So about 218 days, we can't take a long time to get back. Here I am putting the food, water, and oxygen back into the ascent stage and also to the seat, but we're also waiting for the tack life support to rebalance the food, water, and oxygen because we had time warped until we were close to the Mars to Earth transfer window and we needed it to get the numbers right. And as you saw there, we we're almost done. It was just perfect. We were almost done with that bottom tank. We only have a little bit of food, water, and oxygen left. And here we are separating off the return stage. So that's what it looks like altogether. It's got its own little solar panels and all that stuff, but no control, right? There's no controller on there. There's also no parachutes. We were relying on the Kerbal's own parasail or whatever you call it, the thing that they have, their own parachute, uh, in order to have Adafsky basically gagarin it back down. That's gonna end up being a problem, uh, spoilers. Anyway, so that return vessel is basically out of control, but in orbit, and we are deorbiting. But I, for when we separated that off, it reverted to being at the Kerbal's eye point in control. So I think I'm retro burning properly, but I'm not, and we're wasting a lot of fuel here. Ultimately, when we get closer to the atmosphere, I realize that because, well, it's more obvious, and because otherwise it was in the dark, it was really difficult to tell. And so I reset it, and we wasted some fuel, but it wasn't too big a deal. Some of that fuel came from our ascent stage, but there are tanks attached to the bottom bit that we will be separating off soon. And those little spherical tanks that are attached to the bottom tank with the food, water, and oxygen were meant for helping with capture and also this entry and landing business, but we've expended those and so that wasn't great. We used a little bit of the ascent stage in order to finish things off. So anyway, here we are coming down and the parachutes are initially set to pop by 8 kilometers and that worked fine. We're pretty light on the heat shield right now because the big tank there is just empty food, water, and oxygen. So here, the Kerbal's parasail or parachute or whatever you want to call it uh, was not supposed to pop out. Uh, the atmosphere of Mars is at 0.01 atmospheres and the limit set for the Kerbal's own parasail, parachute, whatever, is 0.04, so it's not supposed to point uh, pop out, but it did. And... Yeah. We, we're relying on that to come back home, but... I, I it, It's not going to pop out when we get back to Earth, sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to tell you that right now. Ah, uh, it was sad. Anyway, on the positive side, uh, this is the softest landing I've probably ever done on Mars. As we very gently come down, definitely the right engine for the job here. It was able to throttle down so that we could keep going down, but 
also had the right amount of thrust. Also for ascent, very good. We've got a shaky ground situation, but going to the map view solves that anyway. So yes, yeah, so a little bit of a breather, and then we time warp a day so that we get back in line with the return vessel that we left in orbit. And so that's what we're doing here, but we have no mech jeb. We don't have any sort of display to tell us what our ascending or descending note with respect to the target is, or else, you know, we have to do it all the stock way now. Uh, so that's just how it's gonna be. So I eyeball it there. And we've got, we've got some good music. I, the music was just VLC Media Player playing my normal OC Remix playlist randomly, by the way. But it happened to match out pretty well. Anyway, we get rid of the parachutes. We certainly don't need them here. And if they're adding any extra mass, we don't need that. So that was part of the plan to get rid of them anyway. And there we go. Davsky's ready to go. And off we go. Now, the little tanks that are attached to landing legs are meant to drop. We have the couplers there. And so once they are out of fuel, we will drop them. And I bring out the view of the tank to know when the methane and oxygen has been depleted. There is depleted, and off they go. So that will give us some more delta V, though. I don't know how heavy those decouplers were. They sure seem very forceful right there, didn't they? Anyway, so we go up. And of course, I have to. Once we get out of the thicker part of the atmosphere, I have to think about how to line up with our target in orbit. And again, that's just the old fashioned way looking at the map. And once I've got the difference in inclination minimal, I decide, since our apoapsis is already touching the target orbit, to just coast to apoapsis and then plot from there. And, but we're way too far behind, so we'll have to wait a few orbits in order to get to it, which is fine. We still have. Again, we've landed with two weeks worth of supplies, and the Kerbal used one day while waiting to get it back in line, but we haven't used that much. In fact, it would have been better off if we had used a bit more, perhaps. Okay, so anyway, we are rendezvousing, phasing with the target, and here we are meeting up with our currently tumbling return vessel. And Davsky has to leave this little toroidal tank and get over there. That is wasting a little bit of food, water, and oxygen, and we can't transfer it. We don't have a, we can't dock to the other thing. We don't have a docking port, so off goes Davsky. And it is tumbling. We're just gonna have to try and board command here. There we go. And now Davsky is ready to go back home. Now, it shows 2,500 meters per second there, and initially, Transfer Window Planner said that we'd take 3,400, so we wouldn't have been able to get back, but when I plotted it manually, I found that it was much less, so Transfer Window Planner wasn't really expecting us to be in the orbit that we're in, I guess? I don't know. So, it was just wrong about that. And the thing is, we have to make sure that we get there quickly enough so that we won't run out of supplies, so we have to do a mid-course adjustment. Basically, what we're doing is, we're actually plotting to go there faster and then readjusting at our mid-course adjustment to get the right position and it was really tight. You can see the initial burn is about 2,100 meters per second. The mid-course adjustment is over 300 so we're basically using all of our propellant. The, the thing is though we will at the mid-course adjustment have more delta V because we've used up half of the food, water, and oxygen so there's that going for us. But as plotted, it was basically exactly how much Delta V we were reading, and also we would be taking up all but one day of our supplies, maybe less than one day, so it was just barely enough. But anyway, we are going home. It was certainly better than what Transfer Window Planner was telling us, so I was happy that we had some chance of making this happen. And that was the initial burn out of Mars, and this was the mid-course adjustment, 355 there. But here, having consumed so much of the supplies, we had more than enough Delta V for this particular burn. And the sort of re-entry part, the one above the heat shield, uh, has its own fuel for orientation in the atmosphere of Earth. So that's not a problem. That's not being read by the Delta V right now. So here we are in Earth SY, having completed a minor burn to get our periapsis in, and we're aiming for about 61 kilometers. And finally we separate off the supplies, 
and the transfer stage for the return to Earth. And now it's just heat shield, some tiny thrusters, some tiny tanks for those thrusters, and the Kerbal in the seat. Oh, and the solar panels that we retracted. So, in the end, uh, I think what we need to do is just put a parachute on this instead of relying on the Kerbal's uh, parachute because... Yeah. <laughs> um, I, it, it turns out we might have used that on Mars and we don't get to use it twice. I did not know that. I haven't done a whole lot of bringing the Kerbals down with their own personal chute slash parafoil, whatever it's called. Anyway, Dasky survives the re-entry and we check the G-forces ultimately once they subside here. There's obviously no like descent mode on this or lifting re-entry, it's just straight in ballistic. And so it's subsiding there. Appropriate music is appropriate. Okay. And I think it was uh, something just north of 13 G's. Uh, there we go. 13.6. I checked the altitudes up there to see whether it's land or water, and it is water that we're coming down on. And not that you could tell just by looking at it, and of course we don't have MechJeb to tell us what biome we're over. And here we are, rocking back and forth. And at 5 kilometers I decide to have Dafsky leave the seat and try and parachute down. And... Well, that wasn't such a good idea. Well, not that there was any choice. So, as Dasky plunges to her demise on otherwise a fairly successful mission, except for the fact that we didn't actually set foot on Mars, we didn't have a ladder, but um, that could have been very easily done. Uh, in principle, I've demonstrated that this is possible. I don't know if I'm going to revisit this or not. Incidentally, the choice of New Glenn as the launcher was only because it was the smallest launcher that could do the job. So, just if you're wondering, Falcon Heavy is bigger. I think any refinement of this mission would still be able to launch in New Glenn if we fixed what minor details were sort of not quite right. Anyway, if you think you can make a mission that's even smaller, by all means, go for it. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.